so hey guys and welcome back to another weekly fighting roundup and of course today got the boxing and MMA news as ever and so if you are new around here and you haven't yet subscribed please do so like video if you do indeed like the video and let's get straight into it so starting off of course with the boxing news and so Doheny won via TKO in round 4 versus Bayogos Takai won via Inam decision versus Maloney to become WBO World Bantamweight Champion Inoue won by unanimous decision versus Ishida to remain WBA World Bantamweight Champion. Akui won by unanimous decision versus Kuahara to remain WBA World Flyweight Champion. Inoue won by a TKM round 6 versus Neri to remain uh, IBF, WBA and WBC and WBO World Super Bantamweight Champion. And to speak about that card, obviously... At the early part of this week, it was a card in which I was very excited for. Of course, every time a new way fights, I'm just very, very excited for because he probably is my favourite fighter at the moment. And before we get on to talk about that fight, which was another very good performance from a new way and obviously had to deal with something different, but like I said, we'll talk about it in just a moment. The Takai one, though, was... Uh, an interesting victory. I mean, I thought Maloney would be able to win. Obviously, it's not been a very good week for the Maloney brothers in boxing in general. But Takai, I thought defensively he wasn't really sound enough to go into the fight. I didn't think he would be able to deal with the compact nature in which Maloney fights very tight, compact in his work. And Takai, he used his power well. He found a relatively good range and was just outworking him to be completely honest and Maloney's they seem to have that similar style where they're wanting to be in your face and they will throw and they'll make it difficult but there's not really too much technique behind their shots at times and there's not loads of power and there's not really enough to make an opponent respect them and they're very easily there to be hit and I think Taco probably was there to be hit as well but he just had that more youthful will in him to want to come and want to win the title and of course he did and I mean when you look at the bantamweight division at the moment obviously Inoue another uh, Japanese fighter the Japanese fighters are taking over the bantamweight slash well super bantamweight division if you you know class Inoue as well it's kind of it's really interesting to see to be completely honest it's a lot of talent being shown from Japan and I think it is about time that they're getting put on such a pedestal that they are now and Anoue has been the leading fighter so far from them to really put them on the pedestal but when you look there is a lot of quality world class level fighters coming out of Japan and like I say it's, it's now being shown through the amount of champions in which they do have currently. When you look at the Anoue fight obviously Dirt versus Ishida, Takuma and Nui. It was a, a, a relatively good performance as well. Obviously, he suffered a knockdown as well. It was a flush shot and, I mean, I thought Nui would be able to win. Ishida, he's, he looks good, but he looks quite slow. And in the end, it was a good performance from Nui. I think there's definitely defensive issues that are with Nui. And I think sometimes he can be overconfident in his work and... I don't know if that's perhaps just wanting to prove and having that self-confidence, which is good, but I just don't feel like it's always the, the cleanest of defensive work and he has just got a very low guard and does take quite a few shots. He has a good chin, but he does take quite a lot of unnecessary shots, I feel, and possibly at a point there might be somebody who can make him catch up with that, but for the moment he's getting through every challenger that he is facing. And of course, the Akui Kuahara won. That was a, you know, a, a decision in which I thought wouldn't go that way. Uh, I thought Kuahara would be able to win, but it was another good performance from Akui, and he is now showing that from the win with De versus Delakian as well. He's another fighter that's showing that he can consistently fight at a world level now. It wasn't just a, a one-time thing beating Delakian. And to speak, of course, about the Inoue Neri fight, obviously. Neri dropped to Nui. It came as a massive surprise to everybody, including myself. I feel like everybody was just like, whoa, what happened there? And I feel like Nui was just possibly a little bit too eager to come in quick and to put on a show and to get him out of there. And quite often you see Nui come and be confident and perhaps be a little bit, maybe not cocky, but some of the stuff that he does, you can see that he uses confidence from that. And 
possibly just wanted to do that and he didn't respect the power in which Neri had. But as soon as he got dropped, he then went on to become a sensational fighter and really put on a show and really just hardly get touched and just completely demolished Neri and just such good boxing. It was amazing to see, really showing the class and that's what you want and that's what you need to see from uh, a pound for pound best in my opinion fighter when they're up against it and when they're struggling and well when they face adversity and when they've had to deal with that I mean just to be able to drop Neri the very next round is very impressive in itself and I feel like Noe isn't getting I feel like he is getting credit but I feel like a lot of people are still just not crediting the opponents that he's beaten as well I mean Neri is somebody who obviously he's only ever suffered one defeat and he's somebody who's been around the top level in the division for a long time now and he was always going to be a tough competitor and it was the same when he fought Fulton a lot of people just went on to say that Fulton was a nobody fighter and stuff like that and people aren't giving the credit to the opponents he's facing and I feel like what he's doing is just crazy and it should be really really credited and I feel like the Japanese fans are definitely doing that of course I think he sold like it was like a 50,000 seat of stadium to watch him which is amazing but I just feel like in a, in a world level, hopefully in his next fight, it's rumoured, see, I'm going to talk about it in a moment, it's rumoured to be in the UK, so hopefully that means that there'll be more eyes on him and more credit will be given to him if he goes to get another very sensational victory as well. Moving on, Fury versus Usyk 2 is being planned for the 12th or slash 13th of September and uh, no of October and the Joshua fight has been eyed for March 2025 so they're already planning ahead uh, Turkey Al, Al Sheikh and it's, it's amazing to see some of the plans that he's coming out with at the moment another one Inoue's in talks to fight Goodman that is not one of the talks but Inoue's to fight in Wembley that is one of the talks on the Anthony Joshua undercard in August so there's a few options in which Inoue's got now and I'm sure he probably will end up going for the one that is going to offer the bigger money. Canelo vs Crawford is being planned for December slash January time. So that's another fight. So that's just a, an amazing fight. And I don't necessarily know how it's going to work with the weights and everything like that. I don't always like too big a weight differences between fights or, uh, fighters. So I don't necessarily know how much I'm a fan of this fight. But it is on paper a great fight and we'll have to wait and see if that actually does end up coming to fruition or not. A UK versus USA 5v5 is being planned for December. I like that a lot. I don't necessarily know at the moment how many UK fighters can go and fight some of the US's best but I would also be intrigued to see what US fighters would willingly fight on an undercard type format where they're not the main star. Janabek will fight Mikhailovich July 13th. R McCrory will fight Roach Jr. June 28th. Neri is moving up to featherweight and he has called out Lopez. I feel like that would make for an entertaining Mexican fight. Inoue may fight at, like I say, at Wembley Stadium in next September. Boxer has partnered with Hell Energy Drink. Aziz will fight June 15th. Smith has been ordered to fight Fernandez. It seems like every week Dalton Smith is getting ordered to fight another European opponent because they just keep pulling out from the seams of it. Stevenson versus Haruti and Nan. Foster versus Conceição. Davis versus Madueno. And Davis will fight July 6th. Good to see Stevenson back. I feel like it's a it's a fight in which he can look comfortable in, and I feel like he probably should come on and put a real good boxing display of the skills that he do does have just from the last fight and hopefully he'll be more eager now to really put on an attacking performance and still show that amazing power and well that amazing ability that he does have and the Foster versus Conceição is a great matchup as well. Matchroom has partnered with O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Charlo was arrested, I thought I'd mention it, I feel like Jamal Charlo is not in a good point in his career right now and I mean he's been stripped of his WBC title as well now and it's not been a good week for him, I don't necessarily know if it's a good time for him to be having big fights or anything like that, I do feel like he needs to you know, get his life in check more than anything at the moment and I don't know, I feel like there's a few fighters in which bad things are going on the outside and then they're coming on to go and win big fights so I don't necessarily know if he should not fight but hopefully his mental side and everything is not too bad and you know I'm not going to comment too much but 
yeah, it's just I'm just saying what's been happening. Calazzo will fight as a parter June seventh. Adamus is a new WBC World Middleweight Champion since Charlo was stripped. Masvidal will fight Diaz July sixth. That's in their boxing fight out there rematch, but in boxing and it's had to be moved because there was just too many things from the sounds of it going on on June first. Scarf has joined Wasserman. He's fighting against Juhadzian, uh, I believe, this week for their title eliminator. Sims Jr. has joined Golden Boy. Farmer is set to fight to July 13th. McKaylian vs. Roziki. Green vs. Baringa. Cheney vs. Hunter. El Bali vs. Angulo. And Williams vs. Perez will fight to June 7th. Adamus is set to fight Gorsha June 15th. Add into that already great Davis Martin card. Garcia has sent Spence Jr. a fight contract. That's interesting that they've been going back and forth as well now i feel like that could make for an entertaining fight and would probably be something i would be wanting to entertain fury is making his acting debut in the debt inherited i don't know if anybody cares that's tommy fury but i don't necessarily know if anybody cares but i thought why not mention it collins versus abdullah has gone to a purse bit. i think that is a very good uh, matchup the Zone has partnered with WBC Boxing. Uh, I don't necessarily know if that means anything for the titles or not with their partnership, but nonetheless they have. It might necessarily be a bad thing if fighters aren't willing to fight on for WBC because they don't want to represent the Zone. But I don't necessarily know what it means. WBO have ordered a Yard versus Boatsy. Hopefully we end up seeing that fight because that is a great fight. Aram wants Stevenson versus Lomachenko later this year. I'm going to speak about the Lomachenko fight in just a moment, but hopefully we end up seeing that fight now because, you know, that is probably the one I want to see the most. Possibly Davis is another option, but that is a fight in which I personally want to see the most. Ramirez vs Barbosa Jr. is being planned for August. Inoue is the new Ring Magazine number one pound for pound fighter, which is, in my opinion, great to see as, you know, it links up to my opinion, but... It's, it's come with some mixed res response, but I, I think it's more than valid, to be completely honest. And it's a big accolade to have. I believe it's the first Japanese fighter to have that accolade. I might be wrong. Walsh vs Ortiz, Balderas vs Espinosa, Barrera vs Robles, and Medina vs Felix will fight June 7th. Sweeney will play Martin in her biopic. Uh, that's an acting thing. That's Sydney Sweeney playing Chrissy Martin, I believe, in her biopic. It's seen as the, the Rocky, the female Rocky. It's interesting. Rivera is set to fight Sandoval June 15th. Mercado will fight Ali June 29th. Great to see Mercado finally getting a kind of test with her world title that she holds. WBC have ordered Haney versus Martin. Espinosa versus Chirino. Cortez versus Nova. Isley versus Martinez. Diaz, Navarro and Zamora will fight June 21st. Interesting to see Rebase and Ramirez not getting the rematch with Espinosa. But I feel like Chirin Chirino is... You know, he's, he's ranked highly, he's more than deserving of a world title shot. So Rafa is in talks to the fight Smith. That's a fight that's kind of come out of nowhere. Mm, it's an alright fight. I don't necessarily know if it will be in England or not, but it's an interesting one, is to say the least. Talks are being made for a new way to fight to Rodriguez at Wembley. Like I say, he's been talks to fight at Wembley in August, and there's talks for him to fight... Bam Rodriguez, of course, if he beats Estrada. I don't necessarily know if I like that contest. Like I say, I'm not too much of a fan of fighters moving up too much in weight. And Rodriguez, I believe, has to move up two weight divisions to be able to fight Inoue. And Inoue is, you know, growing in weight in general each time anyway. So, mm, I don't know. I don't necessarily know. It would make for a huge fight. I'm sure it would make a lot of money. And it would be a big, big win for either fighter. But don't know necessarily if it's a fight in which I want to see or not. Wiggins will fight to June 7th. Williams won via KO in round 1 versus Souza. Mex we uh, free won via Inama Sijin versus Gala. Eridinebat won via TK in round 3 versus Mikado. Felix Jr. won via Inama Sijin versus Navarro. Lipinets won via Inama Sijin versus Davis Jr. That's a, That was a very good fight. I think it was an underrated fight. I think these Pro box TV cards are good cards, and I mean Wednesday night boxing. Who's going to complain about that? It's a good fight. I feel like very often you see, not to be too horrible, I suppose, but you see British fighters perhaps becoming a little bit desperate in their career and taking fights where 
they're coming in as a really big underdog and I just don't necessarily know if they're coming in with the right mindset or not but they always get the credit as being a tough fighter and being a game fighter but they just never seem to get the win and you just see that they haven't got like the defensive capabilities and their toughness and their mental toughness is going a little bit but they always have that physical toughness in them to keep going it's just they just can't outskill them and it's I think it was another case there but another you know amazing fight and probably was a, a fight to the candidate between the two of them plus you know they're just a great undercard as well Fletcher won by points versus Trivalco, Ali won via points versus Mosquero, Fayol won via TK round one versus Lutic, Berardi won via points versus Volkov, Barney Smith won via points versus D. Oliveira, Sharp won via points versus Arce, Garner won via Nama Sijin versus Dylan to remain the BBC International Super Featherweight Champion, Collins won via Nama Sijin versus Grandelli to become EBU Silver Featherweight Champion, Bentley won via TK round two versus Dignum to become WBO International Middleweight Champion, I think that was uh, an interesting card of fights, nothing too crazy. I think Sharp has shown yet again that he's probably not going to be able to get to a world level and he did well to recover off of what happened. Obviously, he's been out for a while, so I'm sure he needs to improve on things like his timing and things like that. But just in general, it wasn't anything too impressive. And the record that he's got, you know, suggests that he's a world level fighter and he was calling out Stevenson and everything like that. But you just know for a fact that that, is, that fight's not going to happen. Garner fight, that's good, I'm a fan of Garner and that was a necessary fight for him to really show that he's tough but he's good, I, I'm a fan of him, he's got nice skilled boxing, he's sharp with his work a lot of the time, Dylan is a very tough Brit like British game opponent, he's going to be in your face the entire time and going to bring the fight and Garner had to go through a, a storm and defensively there are things that, you know, overconfidence and dropping of the guard and stuff like that but he was a very good performance from him as well, and I'd like to see him versus Bellotti if that fight does end up getting made. Uh, Collins, that was an interesting fight. Collins, you know, yet again, seems another Queensbury fight who's meant to be some huge name and really be progressing really well. And I just feel like he's found a level where he's comfortable at the moment, and it was a tough fight for him, and I just don't think he's ready to progress past there yet. And it's very common to see... British level fighters struggling to go past European level and perhaps, not saying definitely, but perhaps that could be the case with somebody like Collins. Benley, great to see him back to winning ways. I didn't think Dignam was really going to be up for too much of a too much of a fight. I don't think he would be able to take it if Bentley actually let his power shots go, which he didn't do against Heaney. But he seems now more up for it than ever and back to his best ways. And that was a good stoppage from him and it was nice to see him get back to comfortable winning ways. Jolly won via points versus Busetta. Shepard won via stopping around three versus Ellis. Jones won via points versus Howes. Fury won via TK around two versus Corte. Edmondson won via points versus McIntyre. Jeffers won via K in round five versus Johnston. Edwards won via Nama Decision versus Ward to become WBA Intercontinental Featherweight Champion. Price won via Technical Unanimous Decision versus McCaskill to become IBO and WBA World Worldweight Champion. To speak about a couple fights off that card. Uh, Jones, that points victory versus Howes was a tough one, but somebody I had on the channel a while ago, and it's really nice to see him progressing, and really nice to see him actually winning a uh, 50 50 fight. That Jeffers stoppage was an impressive stoppage. I'm glad that the ref didn't try count Johnson or anything and just went straight to make sure he was okay. Sometimes you see refs really trying to force the count, and there's just no need because the fighter, are, are, you know, they need that medical attention more than anything, and he did get that. But like I say, a good performance from Jeffers and a good stoppage. Uh, Edwards, it was a solid performance from him versus, of course, uh, Ward and. Ward obviously fought Janabek and he lost in a worse fashion, so I don't necessarily know if you know Edwards is ready for a world level step up yet, but he's progressing nicely and that was a, a first tough test for him. The Fury one, that was a good stoppage for him and it's nice to see him being active now and I believe he's got his next fight announced soon already. Uh, and then of course the Price technical unanimous decision that was an interesting fight, it wasn't anything too impressive, obviously she looked good, she was relatively, like she was the better fighter by far, she was just seemingly struggling to get off too much work, but when it when it became physical she showed that she can be physical and quite often when you are fighting a world level opponent, 
you have to be physical against them and prove that you can go to wherever the fight needs to go and she proved that and she did definitely do that. I just don't think there's much left for McCaskill now to be completely honest. I feel like she is past her best in her career and yeah, it's just another one of them ones. I don't really think McCaskill showed much of anything to be honest. But Price, you know, becoming a world champion in her home country, full credit to her and hopefully we see now more big fights in the world weight division because it was it's calling out for that really. It's a it's a very stacked division at the moment. Champions wise there's some great champions and my prediction was right for that one. Butler versus Jimenez was cancelled. Uh, there wasn't really too much talk about why it was actually cancelled, but luckily I spoke to Mason Cartwright yesterday who was meant to be on the card and if you have not already checked out the interview with that, please go do so and he kinda of disclosed to me as to why it was cancelled. Obviously I think it was something to do with Jimenez's medical or anything and not coming through and it ended up being cancelled, which was sad. Obviously I didn't have my prediction for it and Everything, but I'm sure it won't be too long till Butler gets some sort of replacement for a world title fight. Uh, Ahio won by a TK round 1 versus Brown. Goodall won by a TK round 10 versus Opelu. Hatayev won by a TK round 6 versus Bolotniks. Johnson won by a majority decision versus Hughes to become WBA World Bantamweight Champion. Guevara won by a split decision versus Maloney to become WBC Interim World Super Flyweight Champion. Lomachenko won by a TK in round 11 versus Cambosa Jr. to become IBF and IBO World and Lightweight Champion. And to speak about that card, probably, you know, won the, well, Bali Anui won the second biggest card, in my opinion, of the week. And it was one which I was excited for. And Start off with the Guevara, uh, no, we'll start with the Johnson one. Uh, that was very strange what happened with the announcement. I think that's awful what happened with the announcement, really. I really think something more should have been done for the announcer for doing that because I've seen a few times announcers announce things wrong and then be quick to correct it, but he just wasn't really quick at all and let you celebrate and everything like that, which is just horrible, really. And when a fight's that close, it's just horrible, and it shouldn't really have been the case. But when you know, when you look at the fight, it was a good fight. Obviously, I would love to see a rematch out of it. I, I believe possibly it wasn't too huge of a robbery or anything. The actual result, I don't really think. I feel like it could have possibly gone either way to an extent. I mean, Hughes was always going to be the more active in your face one, but Johnson was going to be the cleaner boxer out of the two. But. Mm, it was an interesting fight. It wasn't anything too spectacular, but nonetheless, Johnson remains champion, and I would like to see the rematch. Uh, the Guevara Maloney one, another controversial apparent decision. I got my prediction right for this one, as uh, which was you know nice, and a lot of people weren't really thinking that Guevara would be able to come and do this, but he did. I think he probably did deserve to win. I would say that he was the more aggressive. I would say that he was the one landing the better shots on the front foot and switching up the variety of shots and perhaps he wasn't the fastest but I feel like he did the better job and Maloney was very uh, opinionated and you know he's claimed to have retired now I don't necessarily know if he has or not but he's claimed to and like I said it's not been a very good week for the Maloney brothers but Guevara now possibly gets a world title shot off of you know losing against Quadras in the last time he fought for an interim world title and then the Lomachenko fight, I mean, I got my prediction bang on. I believe I said TK in round 11 as well. And it's amazing to see Lomachenko get back to winning ways. I feel like he really did show his class and show that he is a level above Cambosis Jr. And he is just so amazing to watch whenever you watch him. The shots that he picks and the amount of shots that he can fire off in such a short space of time in such a, a difficult angle and then reposition himself to go and do the same thing again. It's just so hard to counteract. And obviously... Perhaps his, his record isn't something which is always going to be looked upon in the history books, but when you look at his style and the way that he managed and went through every single fight of his, he is somebody who is going to go down as just such an incredible fighter. And like I say, he is one of my favourite fighters to watch and always makes boxing look like that of an art form. And yeah, he's just amazing to see. And like I say, he did show that level of class. And then what's next? I mean, like I say, I'd love to see the Stevenson one. I think as a technical matchup, that would be an amazing fight. People, a lot of people talking about the Davis one. I wouldn't be against it. I just don't necessarily know if it will happen. But like I say, I wouldn't be against it. But yet again, Lomachenko so it's showing that whatever age he is, he can still be a world champion. King won via unanimous decision versus Arif. Arts won via TK round 5 versus Knights. Miss won via TK round 1 versus Taylor. Kenny won via TK round 2 versus Brooks. Poker won via unanimous decision versus Barbie. So Papi won via stopping round 3 versus Ferrari. Cruz, uh, I won't speak about that card. Uh, you know, Misfits card, uh, I think, 
some standout performances. Art, I thought, looked good. He showed uh, back an actual boxing ability that he does have, which I'm a fan of. Uh, the Mist, one versus Taylor. Taylor looked very, looked like he really couldn't take a shot, and it seems like he's no longer going to be boxing now, but Mist, I don't necessarily know if he's anything, you know, he's not really, I don't think he's too special. Uh, Kenny, constantly holding the back of the head of Brooks, but showing that he is better, and the age of Brooks was just, you know, I always knew that would be the case. Prediction-wise, uh, Arts one's right, Taylor one wrong, Kenny one right, uh, Poker one, I said that was right. She put on another very game performance and showed the defensive weaknesses of Barbie and just went through the power and pushed through the power. It wasn't necessarily the most technical display like any of the women's boxing fights in Misfits are, but it was a very well, in your face type performance where she was just putting it on Barbie the whole time which was nice to see and was pretty much what you had to do to be able to deal with the power of Barbie uh, and Salt Papi that stoppage versus Ferrari was a strange fight as well I don't necessarily know if I want to see Ferrari back in Misfits I got my prediction right for it but I said in my prediction that Ferrari is very wild in his strikes and he does have that you know bit more MMA type style and when he was going for takedowns and things like that it was just like what am I watching here really and sometimes you get that with Misfits where it's just a little bit like what are you watching but Sol Papi just didn't really get a chance to do too much of his work I knew it would be difficult because of this the unorthodoxness of Ferrari and I feel like the technical ability of Sol Papi is still there but I still feel like the possible defensive problems are still there as well Cruz drew vs Romero, Hernandez won by TK around 7 vs Lugo and speak about them two fights, obviously I did a prediction for the Cruz Romero one, it was it was a good fight, I thought it would always going to be a good fight, a draw possibly, I would have said that Cruz won, she actually did show a little bit of head movement for once and you know showed her experience at the top level but Romero was seemingly trying to go for a stoppage in her shots and stuff like that but she was looking good she was possibly being the more accurate ones at times I feel like I don't know I, I believe that Cruz was getting off the better work and like I say was offering out the better head movements and possibly in my opinion deserved to win but it probably means that there will be a rematch now and hopefully we'll actually see Romero be able to get through a world title fight without it ending in a draw. Uh, and the Hernandez Lugo one, I've got a prediction bang on for that one as well. Hernandez in your face type style as always and just too much for a Lugo opponent which I just always knew that would be the case and hopefully now I'd, I'd like to see him versus Lara to be completely honest. Him versus Cordina could be a good fight as well or Roach Jr but him versus Lara I feel like is a good fight. Obviously Lara is not really looking too good in, at the moment but I still believe that could be a good fight uh, and then Brown has retired as well and that's all the boxing news. Moving on now to the MMA news. Sandhagen will fight No Magomedov August 3rd. Tolbot will fight Gamori June 29th, UFC has signed an agreement with Riyadh season, Lessi will fight Kuyate July 5th, Cape will fight Makayev July 27th, that's a world title, well a UFC title eliminator and hopefully Makayev can get through that one because I want to see him fight for a UFC title, Jimerson unfortunately has passed away, he was one of the you know, founding fathers of the UFC with his one punch, uh, one boxing glove style and it's just showed the, the the change in UFC from then, but he was. I just really enjoy that era of the UFC. It's just the early early stages, and rest in peace uh, to him. Like I say, uh, uh, somebody who I feel like definitely deserves to have the shine on him, like all the early founders of the UFC. Kananir will fight Imamov, Imavov June 8th. Hardy won by decision versus Aldrich. Johnson won by decision versus Hadley. Waters won via decision versus Goff. Ricky won via decision versus Pennington. Rebovics won via Kent in round one versus McKinney. Hooper won via submission round two versus Borshchev. Cortez Acosta won via decision versus Despagne. Woodson won via decision versus Kakeras. Ferreira won via Kent in round three versus Rebic. Allberg won via Kent in round one versus Menafield. Bugley won via decision versus Ruziboev, Lewis won via KO in rounds 3 versus Naskir Mento and to speak about a couple fights off that card, not too many, I wanted to touch upon the Hooper one, I was really liking the variety in submissions he was going for, I feel like that was something very different and shows that he has got that that grappling ability and that wrestling ability and it's just nice to see and it, to get an unorthodox submission just raises a platform for him I suppose uh, the Buckley one coming in as the smaller guy against Rosette Boev who was looking a lot bigger at the weight 
to just continuously put it on a lot of speed in the attacks and you know perhaps rushing in a bit at times of his work but managed to get through it strange announcement after the fight calling out Conor McGregor but I suppose what more can you expect from Buckley and the Lewis one another strange after the fight incident but in general uh, a good performance from him and he's somebody who's always been you know he's never going to be the top fighter in the heavyweight division but he's always managing to get entertaining knockouts and put on a good show and he has a lot of power and when he lands clean he lands clean he's difficult to deal with and he has got good wins on his resume and he, he's talked about wanting to go and fight in the WWE I feel like there's definitely a market there for him I don't really care too much for the WWE I have a lot of respect for what it is but I don't watch it myself or anything like that but there's definitely a market there and when he's doing stuff like what he's doing after the fights with you know flashing the audience and taking his cup out and stuff it's funny to watch and he is somebody he's a fan favorite and that's what the UFC needs for especially these fight night type of fights and final bit of news Holland will fight Olek C. Zek June 1st and that is it for today's video hope you did enjoy like the video if you didn't do like this subscribe if you're new and thanks for watching